Today we are using an Ansco 8x10 commercial view camera. Made in Binghamton, New York from 1925 to 1939. Tripod setup. Let's start by setting up the tripod. First unlock the channel locks and slide out the leg extensions. Looking good so far. And Bob's your uncle. Now undo the expansion lock. Make sure the extension and expansion locks are loose before extending the center column. Now let's take a look at that mounting plate. The camera mount nut should look like this. Lay the camera on the side and attach the mounting plate to the camera. Round and round she goes. Where she stops, nobody knows. Extend the folding base. Fasten the folding base extension lock. Before extending the bellows, be sure they are not attached to the bellows hook. Unscrew the focus lock and extend the bellows using the rear focus knobs. Now let's mount the camera to the tripod head and tighten down the mounting bracket screw. A little wobbly. Better tighten the center column and expansion locks. There, that's better. Changing the lens. Remove the lens cap. Slide up the outer lens board mounting bracket to release the lens board. And now install the new lens. Now let's remove the inner lens board. Just turn the inner lens board mounting locks. And voila! The inner lens board is free at last. Camera movements, lens board. Now let's tilt the lens. Just loosen the front aspect tilt knob. Hammer movements front standard. And now let's try a little rise and fall using the front rise and fall adjustment knobs. Now loosen the front lens shift lock knob. and shift the lens right or left. Camera movements, rear standard. Now loosen the rear tilt adjustment knobs. Back and forth, to and fro. Careful, you're gonna play old man river. This pendulum lever can be useful for centering. as well as this bubble float in the top rear aspect. This, however, is not a useful tool for centering. Tripod movements. The tripod bracket has its own tricks. Loosen the mounting plate tilt lock and raise it up to the sky. This can be useful for architectural photography. Now let's try a pan movement. How about all the way around? That's right. Now let's tilt down. This could be useful for photographing plant life. So far our test subject is doing great. Focusing. 
Now let's open the shutter and diaphragm to the largest aperture size to let the most light in for focusing. You can use the front or rear focus knobs to focus the camera. Now let's loosen the sliding billows extension. This feature is handy for telephoto lenses with longer focal lengths of 10 to 30 inches. This 300 millimeter lens has a focal distance of 11.811 inches. Now you can determine if the billows you're using is long enough for the lens. Dark cloth. And now we'll try out the all important dark cloth. Without it, you wouldn't be able to focus the image on the view plate. Focus dummies. Look who decided to drop in. It's our old pal Laurel. First adjust the focus dummy to your subject's eye level. Focus dummies come in a variety of Laurel or Hardy. I guess two dummies are better than one. Just place Hardy on a light stand and adjust for height. Now let's set up the scene with a posing chair and table. There's our old friend I level stealing the scene. Wonder what he does on his off days. The scene is complete. And the view through the camera. A focus loop comes in handy. Lens settings. This lens is a Snyder Koisma Seymour lens. Try saying that three times fast. The Snyder Koisna Company was founded January 18th, 1913 by Joseph Snyder in the German town of Bad Koisna. Seymour is the name of the lens. The lens is an f5.6 300mm convertible compound lens. f5.6 is the maximum lens aperture, while 300mm refers to the focal length. A 300mm lens has a focal length of 11.811 inches from the lens to the viewplate. The lens also has an f-stop number in green. This is because it's a compound convertible lens, meaning it can be converted to an f12 500mm lens by removing the front lens element. When this is done, the focal length is now 500mm. Now the billows will have to be extended to 19.685 inches to attain a focus. Aperture! Now we find ourselves at the aperture adjustment lane. Notice there are two sets of numbers. Remember how I told you this is a compound convertible lens with two F numbers and two focal lengths. Now we're going to put that knowledge to good use. The white F numbers are for use when using both the front and rear lens elements. The green ones are for use when you unscrew the front lens element. Let's take a closer look at that rear lens element. Now we can see that the rear lens element is marked F12 by 500mm, indicating that this element alone is that equivalent. For our purposes, we'll just leave the lens alone and use the wide aperture settings. Now let's open the shutter and aperture. Shutter lens settings. This little switch is the shutter release selector. M equals meter. Use this setting for fast shutter speeds from 1 to 1 hundredth of a second that are measured with the light meter. B equals bulb. The term bulb was left over from earlier cameras where the shutter was triggered by a pneumatic squeeze bulb. Now they use a shutter release cable. This option allows for shutter times that are short but longer than meter times allow. T is for time. The time setting opens the shutter, then closes it the next time it's triggered. This setting is for long exposures that can be timed with a watch, and this port is for a female threaded shutter release cable. Now let's take a look at the speed control dial. There are three basic components. The shutter piston, the speed control dial, 
and the indicator notch. Light meter calibration. Once a year, you should check your light meter's calibration. Hold the meter horizontally and place your hand over the photovoltaic cell so that no light can get in. Then press the button. If the pointer does not stop exactly on zero, then it needs a calibration. Simply turn the light meter over and adjust the calibration screw using an ordinary dime until the pointer is on zero. Then check it again. Light meter settings. There are various exposure meters to choose from. Let's try the 1950s GE exposure meter type PR1. The Trident analyzer has high and low light level settings for use in bright or dim lighting conditions. Set the shutter speed dial to time, not frames per second. That's for use in Hollywood pictures. Now dial in your ISO. Many exposure scales were used in the past. Fortunately, GE aligned their exposure scale with ASA in 1947 before this meter was manufactured. ASA and DIN have been combined into ISO since 1974. Currently, all meters and film are aligned to the ISO index. If you have a meter that is older than 1950, you should compare it to the readings of a modern light meter, or compare the company's original index to the modern ISO index. Light meter methods. Let's try out some light metering methods. Let's start with an old standard, the 18% gray card method. This method is great for studio photography and artificial lighting. Place the gray card next to the subject's face. Press the pointer lock button to release the pointer. When you have attained a reading, release the button. A 5.5 exposure reading. Now align the middle tine of the Trident analyzer with the pointer. Now let's try the reflected light method. This method is good for virtually all outdoor photography. Position the meter at camera level and point it at the subject. Take the reading and align the Trident with the pointer. Now let's try one with the incident light filter. Place the incident light filter over the photovoltaic cell. Position the meter next to the subject's face and point it at the camera. Then take the reading, then align the trident with the pointer. Exposure settings. Now let's take a look at our exposure settings. Here we see the shutter speed inner dial and the f-stop outer dial. Any of these readings will give you a proper exposure. As we can see here, short exposure settings give you a shallow depth of field and freeze motion, while long exposures give you a wide depth of field and blur motion. Bracketing. Any professional photographer will tell you that bracketing is the best way to get your picture. Bracketing is when you take the same photo at three different exposures. Take the first one at the camera's recommended settings, the second, one f-stop overexposed, and the third, one f-stop underexposed. Now let's try using the plus pointer to increase the exposure. Simply align the plus sign with the pointer. Let's see how that affects one half seconds at f22. Now, one half seconds is set to f16, a larger aperture, thus one f-stop more exposure. Now, let's try using the negative pointer to decrease the exposure. Align the minus time with the pointer. Let's see how that affects one half second at f22. Now, one half second is set to f32, a smaller aperture. Thus, one f-stop, less exposure. Film and plate holders. Film and wet plate holders come in various sizes. Here we have 5x7, 8x10, and 11x14. 
Notice the wet plate holders are numbered here to help keep track of the negatives. Film holders have two dark slides. This is because they hold two negatives. One on front and one in back. There are also two dark slide locks. After every photo, turn the lock to remind you that the image has already been taken. Wet plate holders have a deeper tray to allow for ambrotype and tintype photographs, while film holders are only thick enough to hold a sheet of film. Reducing backs. Here we're replacing an 8x10 viewplate holder with a 5x7 reducing back. You can also rotate the viewplate holder from landscape to portrait. Now let's rotate it back again. Be sure to keep track of where the film holder inserts into the viewplate holder. Cameras come with a variety of reducing backs for taking pictures at smaller sizes. Here we see 5x7, 4x5, and 8x10. Viewplate holders contain a ground glass viewplate. This is where the image appears when focusing. Take a look at these corners. Corners are cut at a 45 degree angle. These angles are called vents. They are responsible for letting air out of the bellows when focusing. This prevents the bellows from developing pinhole leaks. Taking the picture. Now let's pull it all together and take a picture. First open the shutter. Now the diaphragm to the largest aperture size to let the most light in. Now let's take a look under the dark cloth and focus the image. A focus loop will help you attain a sharp focus. Now set the ISO on the light meter. Set the trident analyzer to high. Now point the light meter at the subject and take the reading. Adjust the trident analyzer. Choose an exposure setting. Close the shutter and set the shutter selector to meter. Set the aperture and the speed control dial. Set the shutter cocking lever. Insert the film holder. Pull out the dark slide. Use your body to brace the camera. Take a deep breath and take the picture. Now push in the dark slide. Rotate the film holder. Pull out the dark slide. And take the picture. Easy, right? Now you're ready to be a photographer.